which provides the economic foundation for these United States. So as we celebrate this great event, we have to see the contradictions that it represents. There are many unseen things that are in plain view in Washington, but little understood. Washington, D.C. is one of the first cities in America, uh, actually in the world, that was put on paper before they started anything. And there's 10 square miles. Half of it is in Virginia, and the other half was in Maryland. Now, I want to take just a second to say this. They're trying to imitate the resurrection of Haru. Haru's mother is Mary. Maryland is Mary. Virginia represents the immaculate birth. Virginia is short for virgin. So you have the Virgin Mary giving birth to the nation, half and half. And the Potomac River acts as the Hopi River, which you know is the Nile River. And so on the western side of the Potomac, and they have uh, the Arlington Cemetery is where they buried the dignitaries, the kings. And in ancient Egypt, the western bank is the Valley of the Kings, the Valley of the Nasuts. So you can see an imitation of everything. And as we go through the city, you will begin to see uh, there is no coincidence here. Uh, Abraham Lincoln and George Washington are sitting down trying to look like Abu Simbel, right? And you see Mesur Ursur Ma'atra, Setep Indra, the person they call Ramses II. And they're sitting majestically like this, trying to imitate these powerful African warriors who left their statues and edifice in ancient Kemet. See, the ancient uh, Kemet U said there's four ways we give reverence to our great ones. Uh, first, we, com we speak their name. Number two, we complete their incompleted works. Number three, we deify their completed works. And number four, we leave edifice and images of them everywhere. And so they did exactly that in Washington, D.C. Everywhere you see their heroes. And the hero, the root of that word is Haru. They said ancient Kemet was the old order. And these new European Caucasians was going to issue in the new order. And so they needed the foundation of the old to build their new. In the beginning of the development of the nation, when you had 13 colonies, and it was agreed by Washington and others that they would form a capital district, that black people participated in its development just like they participated in the founding of the colonies of Virginia 1619 before the Mayflower. And the great drama was the role of a black man called Benjamin Banneker. A Frenchman had been contacted, Pierre L'Enfant, in order to build the capital and lay it out with great flair, like some parts of Paris. He was a drunkard. Uh, you know, he had a whole lot of personal problems and uh, eventually was fired from the job. Uh, and he took his plans with him. Now, Benjamin Banneker said he saw the plans and he memorized them. Now, they were so impressed with Benjamin Banneker. Everything he did turned to gold. So he was like one of these ancient commit to ooh, So they believed him. But actually, Benjamin Banneker really kind of laid out his own plans that was similar from studying ancient Kemet and ancient Egypt. And those were the plans that Washington, D.C. was actually done by. Uh, why wouldn't they believe him? He did the first striking clock in America. He wrote the first almanac in America uh, that all farmers all across around the world were using. You know, people were sending from everywhere. So here was this genius right in their midst. So if he said he, he knew the plans, they didn't question it. This is Benjamin Banneker Circle. So this circle is Benjamin Banneker Circle. This is, this is Benjamin Banneker, this circle. This is what Washington, D.C. thought of him. And now look here, in all of this complex, 
is LaFront Plaza, who Benjamin Banneker had to take over and finish his job. It's a multi-million dollar family that was dedicated to the Frenchman, who was a drunkard, addict, died penniless, and then the famous Benjamin Banneker, this is what he got. They put him on a stamp, so I guess they figured they even the score. <laughs> During this time, in the 1700s, um, the European Caucasian builders, Freemasons, don't really have anybody in place that can fulfill their dreams. And so Benjamin Banneker had been in quite a few, um, he had had dialogue with Thomas Jefferson. In fact, he had had some debates with Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson said that uh, the African was inferior to the Caucasian and that his intellectual capacity was never reached that of the Caucasian. And naturally, Benjamin Banneker told him that that was crazy and proceeded to show that he was uh, more intelligent than Thomas Jefferson in every avenue. And Thomas Jefferson thought he was, you know, at the top of the scale at the time. Uh, after three or four letters back and forth, Thomas Jefferson conceded that Benjamin Banneker was the man. And so when he got into dialogue with George Washington about who could do the astrological plotting, Benjamin Banneker was recommended. Thomas Jefferson suggested that Benjamin Banneker be the man, and Ellicott worked with him, and so they were able to do the plotting together. Benjamin Banneker did the astrological, and then Ellicott did the groundwork. And they were able to put these things together so that Washington, D.C. would be laid out physically and astronom astronomically perfect. You know, aligned with the stars, the heavens, and the right angles. So when they place the monuments, when they put down the prime meridian at 16th Street, it cuts uh, Washington, D.C. directly in half. This is the cornerstone. This was the cornerstone that Benjamin Banneker laid out when he put the markers around the 10 square uh, miles of Washington, D.C. This used to be like in the middle of the street. But naturally, remember, this was before the highways and the condos. And um, this stone was then placed here in 1923. And this marks uh, the exact spot. It tells you the exact spot where this cornerstone was. So that was, you know, directly there. So they moved it over here so that it's still a monumental spot marking a Meridian Hill Park. Affectionately, some of the neighborhood people call it Malcolm X Park. Uh, but the traditional name is 16th Meridian Hill Park. And there is some very unique things. If you look, overlook Washington, D.C., you'll be able to see the Tekken. Now, the Tekken is the Washington Monument. That is what the Europeans call an obelisk. And they're imitating the Tekken. The Tekken in, Wash in, uh, in ancient Kemet uh, represent uh, rebirth, resurrection. It represents Asar and Haru. And so after uh, Haru was victorious and defeating Set, he turned into a great falcon, flew to heaven to tell his father he was victorious and to make him the uh, master or the neb of the underworld. And so in his honor of his father, Asar, he erected the Tekken. And in front of all the temples in ancient Kemet, you will have two Tekkens, one representing Asar and one representing Haru. And so a Washington monument is an imitation of that Tekken. It's also a phallic image of the resurrection, the rebirth of Haru coming in from the father and then the father being the new ruler in the afterlife. But when you're in Meridian Hill Park, you can look out at the Washington Monument and just to the right of the Washington Monument, you can see the Step Pyramids. If you take a look straight through, you'll see the Washington Monument and to the right, you'll see the Step Pyramids. are totally oblivious of what they're, you know, what they're doing. Now the step pyramids that you're seeing actually is on top of a Masonic temple of the, of the Scottish Rites. A Scottish Rites Masonic temple where you get your 33rd degree. Now you think that's a coincidence? That you can stand in Meridian Hill Park directly in the middle of the city and look directly at the Tekken and see the step pyramids on top of Meridian Hill Park.